In today's video, we are going to evaluate the study by DeMitt and Kleitman on REM. Now, if you remember, this study explored this idea of eye movement during sleep and dream recall. An EEG was used to provide information about participants' sleep stages. We monitored their eye movement during REM. And remember, REM is rapid eye movement. And the results of the study showed that rapid eye movement occurred during REM, during sleep, during dreams. But you're here for the evaluation, so let's get started. Now, as far as generalization goes, the study had very low participants. Remember, it was a repeated measures design, so we have a very low amount of participants. I believe at the end of the day, there were only seven who made it through the entire experiment. Nine that started, but only two were females. So this study is not going to be generalizable to a large group of people in that sense, but for the plain fact that we all must sleep, it is generalizable to a population, to humans. Now a big strength of this study is that it was a laboratory experiment. And the strength part is that we were able to control for any uncontrolled variables. So for example, we didn't let our participants just wake up naturally. We used a doorbell to wake them up at a specific time. Because if participants were allowed to wake up naturally and some slept longer than others, then maybe those who slept longer remember their dreams more. But we were able to control for that. So everybody had the same amount of time. Now, as a weakness, you have to realize that we're in a lab setting and sleeping here or in this setting was maybe not normal to participants. And although we all may sleep in different places, whether it's a couch or a bed or the floor or who knows where, I do know that sleeping in a laboratory probably was not natural to our participants. Now, on a plus side, we are able to control for demand characteristics because we did not tell participants anything about their EEGs. We didn't even, we didn't even lie to them. Because even if we lied to them, then there could have been demand characteristics there too. But there weren't. They had no idea what was going on. Like, for example, if they thought that they were supposed to remember more dreams during REM and they realized that they were in a REM period of sleep, then they may have said that or they may have given us false information about it because they believed that they were expected to. Now, also remember in another independent variable, we had a five and 15 minute where we allowed people to sleep and dream in those five and 15 minutes and we woke them up. Now, remember that participants, you know, it was kind of counterbalanced and random and participants really didn't know if they had been sleeping for five minutes or 15 minutes. It wasn't like we asked them every five minutes so that they were able to guess. It was kind of random. So in this study, we did not use cause and effect or causal, as some of us may call it. We used correlations, and we were actually able to find a positive correlation in the length of a REM period, so a length of dreaming, with the amount of words people use to describe their dreams. So those with longer REM periods actually use more words to describe that specific dream. Now, the operational definition of dream was very clear to our participants. And this was simply a recollection that included content. And as with most operational definitions, it's going to help to increase the validity because this made sure for demand and climate that what was being recorded were in fact dreams. Now an EEG is a very objective way to collect data. But in this instance, this was even better because we were able to collect quantitative and qualitative data. Quantitative data from the brain waves, the eye movement patterns, and the duration of REM. And the qualitative data came in the form of the narratives, which were given by the people, not the EEG. So just in case I made it sound like the EEG gave qualitative data, it didn't. But we were able to get both types of data from the study, so that was great. Now, each participant had electrodes placed in the same exact positioning on their heads. And the research that we found, even though this was kind of new research, it does correlate with any previous or past research, which is going to help improve the reliability. Now, let's kind of go back to the generalizability here because we have participants that for seemingly were all went to a university. They all have something in common. Um, and we were able to see both male and females in the study and at the same time, although they may have reported their dreams differently, they did kind of volunteer for this. So by doing this, they're, you know, they have something 
in, in common in that instance but at the same time like if you didn't dream at all or if you didn't remember your dreams would you be likely to say yeah i want to be part of the study or maybe if you're someone who dreams a lot and you were like oh yeah this is the study for me so think about that now there are parts of the procedure that basically lower the ecological validity i talked about that already but we had to have certain procedures in place so for example uh, we did not let our participants drink alcohol or caffeine. Now, those that normally did may have dreamt a certain way. Maybe that was natural or normal for them. And by limiting that, yes, we were able to provide a constant among all of our participants, but it may have changed their normal sleep patterns or what was normal for them. Now, remember when I said the participants didn't know much about their sleep patterns? Well, there was one participant, we call him WD, and he was actually misled for one of his sleep patterns when he woke up. So there was a bit of deception for that one participant. So overall though, everything was ethical. We have informed consent. We maintain confidentiality. Their, their initials are in the data though. So um, it is very possible that if you knew who went to that university during that time, I mean, maybe you could find out who these people are based on their initials, but it was done, you know, before it, this was, this was done after we developed the atomic bomb. Okay. Like shortly after. So this was a while ago. Now this is going to be applicable and useful in all types of psychology because people always dream. Now, what we do not know is the meaning of our dreams. And that is what everybody wants to know. And this is what I'm going to tell you that your dreams subconsciously mean something to you. They may not mean the same to everyone because you're living a specific life. And there's no research to back this up. This is just my opinion, but I appreciate you guys hanging out for this evaluation. And don't forget to check out the playlist down below for more evaluations on your AS level 9900 syllabus for psychology.